Welcome back to Afternoon Express. I hope that you are having a fantastic Friday afternoon. After being named second princess for Miss South Africa in 2015, this phenomenal woman has come a long way from her pageant days. With sheer poise and the step of an empowered woman, Nsiki Makize is now an experienced keynote speaker, social entrepreneur and author. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. How are you? Very well, thank you. I mean, how could we not remember the beautiful, confident girl with the spring in her step during Miss SA. Oh, How was you. that experience for you? Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. It was absolutely amazing just the amount of people you meet in that yeah. time. Um, the pleasure of making really good friends that we're all still friends today. And I know that really? surprises a lot of people. But, you know, when you're on a journey, you meet like-minded women that yeah. you probably wouldn't bump into on a regular day. And then you're able to form relationships and build yeah. those. That's phenomenal. And I think just the guts <laughs> to go out and try to accomplish sure. a dream in front of the whole country. For me, that's like a tick off your list and go, well done, yeah. you know, I did that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think this year in particular, I was so impressed with what pageants in South Africa stand for now, yes. as opposed to the old school stigma of beauty pageants and all of that. Especially, I mean, I'm obsessed with this year's winner. <laughs> oh, she is, really, she's oh, stunning. It took us a while to get here, but we finally made it. <laughs> yeah, but it's so amazing because they've chosen the Miss South Africa this year. That is exactly the kind of vibe that you represent. You know, going all natural. I am the strong, independent, educated woman. I'm, I'm so happy that this is the direction. I'm absolutely thrilled. So, I mean, I remember entering the very first time I was the only girl at auditions that had an afro. And I yeah. entered three times in a row until I actually made it to Second Princess. Um, but I remember being told that my hair was inappropriate, you know. So to now, five oh. years later, have her as a Miss South Africa, I'm like, woohoo! Yeah. Like, it's a big win. Like, it's a, it's a huge, huge win. Yeah. Why did you want to enter? For me, I wanted to have a platform that you can use to inspire young women and yeah. it's a platform that's there but i think it's the person who fulfills uh, who brings that platform to life you know so mm -hmm. how do you use it what do you represent what do you stand for and i've always had this thing around how i didn't see girls who looked like me so like, who had yeah. natural hair yeah. on tv and i wanted girls at home who have natural hair to be like oh yeah she's cool so that means i'm cool you know and yeah. i wanted to be that and i thought miss south africa could be a fantastic platform for that um, but i've also, also been passionate about social entrepreneurship yeah. so i wanted to use the platform to engage young people to become entrepreneurs because that's a huge yeah. thing in our country and that the government is trying to do and really say you know if you're in high school if you live in a particular community what are some of the thoughts you could have what are some of the design thinking we can introduce in schools to get kids yeah. solving problems in their own area and yeah. if you're a Miss South Africa and you have all that sponsorship backing yeah. I thought it'd be a great platform to use that but listen you didn't win but you didn't need to because that's exactly what you've done I mean you've yes. gone into this whole world which is amazing you are the ultimate multitasker at presenting keynote speaking writing I mean all the rest <laughs> so what kind of topics do you come in your keynote speeches? So I speak about resilience, so understanding that we're multifaceted individuals, so everyone's always multitasking something in their yeah. lives, right? And you by yourself need to have a good personal ecosystem so that you're able to handle whatever happens in the yeah. external environment. So just having those things. So we call that the fab quotient, which looks at how you feel, how you activate, and how you behave. Um, I speak on mentorship, which is what I wrote a book on. Um, I speak about personal branding as well as branding for entrepreneurs. So in that early startup stage, positioning yourself and figuring out what is your chemistry versus your business. So if you're like the yeah. outgoing person, you're great for starting the business and getting the deals, but you're not good for execution. So yeah. you need to find somebody that can fill that gap for you. And if you're the systems engineering guy and you have a great idea, yeah. you need to find that, hey, how are you person that can go get the funding yeah. or the partners that you need. Um, and then also speak about social marketing. So I think a lot of organizations that do really good work yeah. struggle with telling their story. So it's very important if you are changing the world and if you are doing it, if you have an organization that has really great social impact, to know how to tell a story yeah. that inspires others to change. And I'm hoping that after I come back from doing my master's, I can add social innovation. Yeah. Um, what are you list. doing your master's in? In social innovation. Okay, yeah, amazing. Literally. So I'm looking at social business, microfinance, and how we create sustainable business solutions that yeah. would allow NGOs, for example, to transition from being um, grant funded to... Yeah. It's an aspect of business that allows us to keep doing what we do. And if the funding disappears, we can still survive. Oh, you are just so <laughs> wise. Because I think to become an entrepreneur, you need to be basically be a minder, a grinder, and a finder. The whole thing. And very few people are all three, but you seem to be all, all three. three. Thank you. All of it rolled into one. So your book, My Hall of Mentors, Lessons Learned Along a Journey of Success. Yes. Tell me about what motivated you to write this. So the motivation was two-pronged. 
I, I've always believed in mentorship. I've yeah. always been a person who goes out and finds information. So if it's not readily available, I don't mind looking, I don't mm. mind searching, I don't mind doing the research. Mm. And during this essay, for example, I was meeting so many people and learning so many wonderful things that I didn't yeah. want to forget because there were certain lessons that I thought, you know, I don't need this right now, but it's going to be relevant yeah. a while from now. So I was really writing to myself, hey, girl, you re learned this, don't forget, like this is really good information. And the second part of it was, I was inundated with messages from young ladies on social media going, how do you become successful? And there was sort of an expectation that you just kind of woke up and everything fell into place. And I was like, no, that's not what happened. That's really not how it happened. And that's why I subtitled the book, Lessons Along a Journey of Success, because yeah. success is a journey. You don't really get to a point where you've completely actualized, you know? And even if you do set goals and accomplish them, I think you always get there and you go, wow, I have so much more in me, mm. let me do more. So I was writing to those young ladies and men as well, to say, you know, these are the lessons that I've learned as a young person from different mentors over about seven years. And yeah. this is what I was doing in my life at the time. This is how I met the mentor. And this is what I learned from them, them. And this is how I've used it. And each chapter ends with a section that allows you to reflect. So, I mean, one of the lessons is around delayed gratification and the questions at the end are, what are the things in your life you can afford to put off to ensure yeah. that later on you have greater success? Yeah. Well, out of all the lessons that you have learned, what do you think has been the most important lesson, the one that really drives home, you know, your purpose? I have two. I, I, all the lessons are super phenomenal and all of them have been very valuable. The one would be um, one of my mentors who's a business coach, Christoph Westazen, mm. um, told me about creating your own luck. And if you're an entrepreneur, if yeah. you are... I mean, even in entertainment, whatever it is that you're trying to do and you're trying to build your career, to some extent, you have to create your own luck. And that happens by being prepared, by doing the work, by networking. And if you do enough of that, the opportunity comes together. And the other one that's very relevant for me, I learned from Ku Govinda, which is around life is a balancing act. So there's things in your life that are rubber ball and things that are a glass ball, and you're constantly just juggling the two. And you have to decide what are the things that if you drop this, it'll bounce back in a yeah. year, in a week, in a month, whenever. But the things that are a glass ball, if you drop them at any given point in time, they might shatter, they might break, and you might never be able to put those together again. So I find as wow. I'm building and shaping my life, I'm constantly re-looking at what's a glass ball, what's a rubber ball, and how am I managing the two. You are so incredible, so inspiring, so wise. Thank you for being here and sharing all of your passion and knowledge. You are going to literally be so <laughs> successful in your life. Thank you That's so much. I'm glad funny. I made it here. You are just <laughs> radiating all of this successful, amazing, joyous energy. Thank you for that. Thank you. Well, that's the kind of energy I hope to give people to yeah, put well, out there so it comes succeeding. back to me as yeah. well. <laughs> you do. Thank you so Thank much. You.